Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars Legends lore video. And we're doing something we haven't done on this channel for a while, a top 5 list. Today, specifically, we'll be looking at the 5 worst ways to die in the Star Wars galaxy, all of which make slowly dying in a pool of lava look, well, not so bad. One thing you guys will note as we go through this video is that the horrificness of each one of these situations is exaggerated by the point that pain doesn't really end after death would be expected. This will become clear especially as we get towards the end of the list, but let's not jump ahead. At both number 4 and 5, we have two variants of the Star Wars universe's version of zombies. First and at number 5, we have the transformation into a techno beast. Techno beasts are almost like a machine version of the Flood from Halo. Living beings are infected with a force-powered spore, which slowly works its way into the user's brain and eventually takes full control of their body. Now, I've covered Techno Beasts in a complete video, which I'll link above, but basically as the transformation progressed, living tissue like muscle and skin was replaced with metal and machine parts. Techno Beasts would often sprout blades and saws, and the living being was essentially transformed into a shuffling zombie-like weapon. Of course, while the mind of the original person mostly faded by this point, it did still exist at least to some degree. Techno Beasts were brandished by masters of Sith alchemy and used against the Republic and the Jedi. They would go on to form more Techno Beasts spreading the plague, and once infected it was almost impossible to stop the disease progression. Truly a terrible fate. The fourth worst way to die in the Star Wars universe is an infestation by the Now Now, another zombie-like entity. Thankfully this process is much shorter than that of transforming into a techno beast, however I give it the number 4 spot just because the results are so terrifying. The Now Now are a possible extra dimensional entity found within the unknown regions of the Star Wars galaxy. It takes the form basically of a black ooze which can infect quite easily anyone who approaches it. The Now Now was concentrated in several locations but most notably Mug Fallow which was sort of like a homeworld for them. The Now Now was controlled by some form of higher intelligence a malevolent higher intelligence which took pleasure in torture, causing pain and fear. The Now Now were masters of shape changing and possession. They would often work their way inside a host's body and begin to replace their innards with more of the ooze until basically the host was hollowed out and essentially a water balloon of Now Now. The host would probably be able to feel themselves being consumed from the inside, but at this point there's literally nothing that can be done. Given the nature of the beast, it's also quite likely that if the host was still conscious, they would start experiencing hallucinations or their body would be forced to do terrible things like kill their friends or family. Plus, you have the knowledge that even after your death, it's most likely that your body will be used to further infect anyone who comes across you. So you're propagating the terrible thing that has just caused you immense pain. Part of the reason why I put the Now Now as number 4 is because they're just so strange and mysterious and horrifying. They come from another dimension. They've existed for hundreds of thousands of years and they work with seemingly solely a cruel purpose. Although the dying itself is relatively quick, I just think all in all, it's a pretty terrible way to go. At number 3 we have the process of entechment, and I really couldn't decide where I wanted this one to go, and I had it placed when I was making this list everywhere from spot number 5 all the way to number 2. Entechment was a process used by the Sai Ruvi and others basically to transform a person's life force into energy to power machines and machine components. While it often meant that you'd be, say, piloting a starfighter, it also meant that you might just be a light or a sensor board in a Cyruvi warship, so not a very dignified existence. The thing about Entechment was that although the Cyruvi claimed otherwise, the process was extraordinarily painful, it often drove subjects to madness, and the process was at least theoretically indefinite. Because the beings survived technically outside of their bodies, they didn't need nourishment, they didn't need air or water, and the only thing that halted their ordeal and their unending agony was either the destruction of the vessel that they were within, 
or sometimes the mind just fully snapping. At this point too, the victims were still even conscious at this point. During the invasion of Bakura, some were even driven to suicide, crashing their starfighters. But all in all, especially when combined with the imperialist and domineering nature of the Sai Ruvi, it's just a terrible existence. The Sai Ruvi's plan was to move through the Outer Rim, using a Jedi or Force-sensitive person like Luke Skywalker or Dev Sibwara, to intake perhaps billions or trillions of beings before eventually moving on to the Core Worlds. The invasion would have been sort of self-propagating in a way, because new planets would have yielded new sources of energy. Pretty terrible. It was said that later Intechmid advances were able to prolong the life of the Intect person's energy for an indefinite period, but I'm not really sure how true that is. As a note, in this category, I also include other similar processes, not necessarily called in Techmint, but which are fundamentally the same, including the Dark Empire's placement of human minds in droid bodies, and others. The second worst way to die is one that we actually see in the movies, Death by Sarlacc. There's a lot of lore in the expanded universe created around one line from Return of the Jedi. When you're eaten by a Sarlacc, you will find a new definition of pain and suffering as you're slowly digested over a thousand years. So although that could have been taken as hyperbole, the Star Wars expanded universe took it as fact. Basically, when you're in the creature's belly, you're held down by a bunch of spikes, which inject neurotoxins into your body, as well as some very basic nutrients. Then, I guess you're slowly digested over, well, a thousand years. How that makes sense, actually using nutrients on something you plan to eat anyway, I'm not sure. But we do know those with inside a Sarlacc actually do maintain a degree of consciousness, and can even communicate with other, well, unlucky victims. It also seems like as victims remain within a Sarlacc, their consciousnesses begin to meld, not only with each other, but with the creature itself. Either way, as C-3PO explained, not a very pleasant way to die, and certainly not a quick one. However, that pales in comparison, in my opinion, to the very worst way to die in the Star Wars universe, which is to a spirit bomb. Er, sorry, wrong universe. A thought bomb. A thought bomb is an ancient but incredibly destructive Sith technique, which destroys and traps the souls of all Force-sensitive beings unfortunate enough to be caught within its blast radius. The best and most comprehensive portrayal of the thought bomb comes in the first two books of the Bane trilogy. There we see Lord Khan and the Brotherhood of Darkness employ the thought bomb as a suicidal last act against the Jedi. All four sensitives in Radius, either Jedi or Sith, who are struck by the bomb, and we learn that it goes several kilometers, but not planet-wide, instantly have their physical being destroyed and their souls transformed within the bomb itself. That's the easy part. Once in the Thought Bomb, things get truly terrible. Darth Bane approaches and puts his hand on the Thought Bomb, and he can feel inside that those souls within have already broken and reverted to basically primal feelings of rage and terror. Another who touches the Thought Bomb almost has their own mind broken just by the sheer magnitude of the horrific emotions. The worst thing is, there is nothing someone trapped within a Thought Bomb can do to escape. They are just forced to suffer alongside anyone else who was captured for, perhaps, the rest of all time. Yes, they have lost consciousness, perhaps unlike in Techment, but they still have that basic feeling of just pure dread, terror, pain, and maybe regret. For the Sith, the worst part was that they did this all basically because they were manipulated by Darth Bane as a way to wipe out the Order and begin the Rule of Two. They didn't kill that many Jedi in the end, and their actions were also controlled by Lord Khan, who thought that the Sith would be strong enough to survive. Of course, they were not. Anyway guys, that's all I have for you today. We should be approaching normal uploads pretty soon. I do have an event next week that hopefully I can talk about soon, but after that, things should be getting back to normal. So thank you to everyone who stuck by the channel during these irregular uploads. Thanks to everyone who's gone back and watched prior videos. It's been sort of nice to know that I can take a little break without things totally going to heck. Anyway guys, until next time, this has been Eckhart Slatter. If you have a question you'd like me to answer later, leave it down below with the hashtag AskEck. See you soon. May the Force be with you.